G'day everyone, Ben the Spider Seeker here. Today I'll be talking about some of the spiders you might stumble across in Australia. There's more than I will mention, but you know, that would make for a much longer video. Australia is apparently a pretty dangerous place, famous for a few venomous creatures, like, you know, snakes and spiders. Being a snake catcher, I might do a video later on about them, but for now, let's just stick to the spiders and look at just how dangerous the Australian spiders are. Now there's only really a few medically significant spiders in Australia. I use the term medically significant to describe the potential need for professional medical intervention. Now if you're ever concerned or unsure about your reaction to a bite or a sting from any animal, whether it's listed as medically significant or not, please don't hesitate to seek medical attention sooner rather than later. And of course, you can probably skip the asking on Facebook step. So I've already looked at two of the medically significant spiders in previous spider profiles. That was the funnel web family, being a Tracidae, and the redback spider, which is Latrodectus aselti. I'll link them in the description. I'll be adding a profile on the third medically significant group of spiders in Australia, which is the mouse spiders, or the Miscellina genus as soon as I find a female for some nice clear footage. I've managed to get hold of a male red-headed mouse spider, which is Miscellina ocatoria, and that'll serve the purposes of this video at the very least. I also want to mention a few spiders that are pretty common, but not considered medically significant, despite their appearance, behaviour, or rumours. We'll have a look at them first, and discuss some of the risks, if there are any, associated with them. To start with, let's have a look at possibly one of the most prolific spider groups around Australia. And that is the Bedumna species, or the house spiders. Now their webs can be a bit untidy and usually they have a central tunnel that they hide in. Despite how common they are though, bites are relatively rare since they don't wander away from their webs very often and their first instinct is to escape rather than bite. If they do bite though, Despite their webs potentially being described as funnel-shaped, their venom is not considered medically significant. A bite could cause a bit of pain, but otherwise fairly minor effects. So, they're a very common spider, but they have quite the appetite for flying insects around the house, like mosquitoes. Pretty useful to have around as a natural pest control, really. Another common group of spiders is the Sporacidae family, the Huntsman spiders. They're a fairly diverse family, coming in many different colours, shapes and sizes, although their size is usually quite large. These spiders are wanderers, not web builders as such, and are generally fairly active stalking predators. They're often spotted around the house, usually high up on a wall. If you do see one sitting very still, it's not the best idea to poke its leg since their predatory instinct will kick in and they'll give a bite, because they usually think they're getting a meal out of it. Being a wandering spider though, bites are a bit more common than the black house. Their venom though is not considered medically significant to humans. Reportedly their bites are quite painful, it's in no small part thanks to the size of their fangs though. On to another nomadic spider. This one has quite the reputation, the family Lamponidae, the white tails. I already have a separate video addressing some of the myths surrounding these spiders, which can be found linked in the description. These are an active nocturnal hunting spider. During the day, they'll hide in a corner, under a rock, or even in clothes and linen, and just surround themselves in a small amount of webbing just to stay covered and safe. The strangest thing about white tails is the fear surrounding them. They're not a medically significant spider. Their bites cause only minor effects, if that. There's doubt around whether or not they're actually capable of biting. And if they are, the bites are nowhere near as common as they're reported, thanks to misdiagnosis based on evidence that's nearly 30 years old. And I go a bit more into detail with that in the dedicated video. They do eat other spiders though, even some medically significant ones like redbacks. So if you don't like having the webbed spiders around the house making the place look untidy, whitetails are actually a fairly useful spider to have around if you can bear living with them. 
The last group of common spiders that are not medically significant I want to mention is the Lycosidae family, the wolf spiders. They're a very common burrowing spider. They can often be found in large numbers burrowed into grass. Their burrows are almost perfectly round for the most part. Some of them even cover them with a little trapdoor. The males in this family wander in search of mates. The females might wander a bit if their burrow becomes unsuitable, especially after rain when their burrows might get flooded. They do sometimes accidentally wander into their house, but thanks to the lack of soil to burrow into, mates to find or prey, they're actually better off outside, and that's where they'd prefer to be too. Wolf spiders are generally quite shy. Their response to a threat is to run, so much so that they don't often turn around and threaten, even when directly provoked. Their bites are also not considered medically significant to humans. Though they can cause some pain around the bite site, lasting about a day or two, the worst effects I've heard otherwise have involved a headache and nausea lasting about half an hour. There is some evidence that wolf spiders can be dangerous to dogs. Thanks to the fur of the dogs though, and the nervous disposition of these spiders, bites are not all that common. It's also not completely clear as to whether the size and breed of the dog has an impact on the effect of the venom. Personally, I've seen my dogs harassing wolf spiders multiple times without even incident. I still move the spider away though whenever I get the chance. Now on to the three types of medically significant spiders. We'll look at just how prolific and dangerous they are, and possibly more importantly, is it safe to live in or visit Australia and see them up close? And just how close? Now let's start with the redbacks. Latrodectus hasselti. Being the redback spider is probably the most common and widespread of all the spiders in Australia considered medically significant. They are a remarkably common spider, inhabiting just about every shed in Australia, though I still haven't found one under a toilet seat. Officially, these spiders are no longer considered life-threatening, though historically, 15 deaths have had them implicated as at least a partial cause. The last case being the first in 60 years was in 2016, and it was widely reported, but it wasn't actually confirmed, and it was pretty complicated involving other factors. The other cases were all reported, and again, not confirmed as the sole cause of death, prior to the antivenine becoming widely available in 1956. The main group of symptoms reported is sometimes referred to as latrodectism, a name given to the symptoms caused by spiders from the latrodectus genus. This includes widow spiders from other countries as well. It involves intense pain at the bite site, with localised sweating around the bite as well. Further reaching symptoms can include nausea, vomiting, headache and agitation. If you are bitten by a redback, it's a good idea to apply ice to the bite. That'll ease some of the pain and seek medical attention, at least as a precaution. Symptoms do usually ease within a week. So the bite can be painful and generally quite unpleasant, but the spiders are not prone to biting. They tend to stay in their webs and won't bite unless basically poked in the face, or if something is disturbing it for an extended period. I tend to recommend leaving them where they are found, since then you know where it is. If you kill it, it'll probably be replaced by another one, though it may not be so easy to find, so it might end up somewhere where you don't know about it. I prefer to know where my redbacks are. Next up, we have the spiders belonging to the Miscellina genus, which is the mouse spiders. They're the only genus from the Actinopodidae family represented in Australia. Working out how venomous they are has been a bit difficult, because they have the ability to give a dry bite, delivering no venom, or delivering less venom than is required to cause symptoms. They also share some similar features with funnel webs, which could create some confusion in the medical records, as a result of misidentification. There's been very few reported serious envenomations, with only one confirmed bite and two rumoured bites. The venom they possess is similar to funnel webs in how it functions, to the point where the funnel web antivenine actually proves to be an effective treatment for mouse spiders as well. The males are also more venomous, which is another trait shared with funnel webs. Not all species have males with red heads as well. There's 
a lot of variation between them in their patterning, including some that are solid black. But they are a surprisingly small spider as well. This male Miscellina ocatoria, pictured, has only got a leg span of about 2 centimeters. The females are a bit bigger, and they're a bit more solid. They're also solid black in color. As soon as I find a female, I'll be sure to add a profile video going into a bit more detail about them. Now, historically, no deaths have been caused by the mouse spider, at least none that have been recorded. The likelihood of serious consequences following a bite are generally pretty low, given how rare the contact is with humans and their ability to withhold venom. They are considered medically significant, though, and should be treated in the same way as a funnel web spider bite which is currently recommended as applying a pressure bandage, immobilization, and emergency medical care. Overall, the mouse spiders are a relatively rare spider to come across, with males generally wandering around autumn here in Australia, and females hiding themselves very well in camouflaged barrios. They're so well camouflaged, in fact, that I've never managed to find one, despite a few years of looking. And finally, on to Atracidae, the funnelweb spiders. The male Sydney funnelweb, Atrax robustus, is listed as the most venomous spider in the world, depending where you read. The other spiders in the funnelweb family, though, are all medically significant and can ruin your day, possibly even a little longer. So even outside the Sydney basin, being the range of Atrax robustus, they should be treated with respect. Their venom is only effective in invertebrates, being their prey, and coincidentally primates. So in Australia, Unless you're their food, uh, an ape in a zoo, or a human, there's not much risk posed by these spiders. Even for humans, thanks in no small part to the dedicated anti venine program, education and effective medical facilities, there have been no deaths recorded resulting from a funnel web spider bite since 1981, just before the anti venine became widely available. Before that though, only 13 deaths have been recorded, which is less than that of redback spiders. For such a venomous spider, normally more deaths would be expected predating the antivenine, especially given their range coinciding with the most heavily populated areas of Australia. Now, while their range does include six capital cities, their habit does not coincide with the cityscapes, meaning the bushland and fringe areas they inhabit result in less contact with humans. So while funnel webs are medically significant and a bite is a medical emergency, they do not actively seek out or charge at humans, despite the rumours. They are a generally nervous spider preferring to run and hide rather than confront, which makes sense given that humans are hundreds of times bigger, and more often than not, an encounter with a human means death for the spider. When push comes to shove though, they will do their best to look intimidating. So really, the only common medically significant spider is the redback, which has also been implicated in more deaths than any other Australian spider, and is no longer considered to be life-threatening if properly treated. The other two groups being mouse spiders and funnel webs are actually quite uncommon. Though a lot of people seem to think they are, this is because other spiders can look quite similar, like wishbone spiders and trapdoors giving people this false impression that dangerous spiders are everywhere. They simply aren't. Their attitudes, as well, don't really hold up. While they are quick to threaten in a defensive posture when they're cornered, they'd really rather not have to deal with you at all. So, is it safe to live in or visit Australia? Well, yes. In Australia, we've been living with these animals for a long time. I personally have been actively seeking them out and catching some of Australia's most dangerous inhabitants, including snakes and spiders, and I'm still around to tell the tale. Our wildlife, big, small, dangerous, and harmless, are all beautiful in their own way. Our geographic isolation has resulted in so many species of unique wildlife that simply can't be seen elsewhere in the world. It's worth coming by to have a look. I'll look into it a bit more in a later video as well. It's also worth bearing in mind that we're not the only place in the world with dangerous animals. For now though, I've been Ben the Spider Seeker, and you've been great. Catch you next time.